Okay, hi there and welcome to Escape Trailer. I'm Carl, this is Harrison. And today we're going to take you through the configuration options build sheet. And this is a walkthrough exercise, really an education exercise that we're putting together to help you determine which options you'd like to include in your Escape Trailer. Absolutely, so be sure to check the description down below for a few helpful links. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that has a few different things. It has a measurement for the floor plan. It also has the standard and optional locations for hatches, windows, outlets, all those kinds of things. Yeah. And it also shows you where certain options can go inside the trailer. So be sure to follow along with that as well. Good. Third is a link to our personalization page. So particularly for our base section, this has all of your personalization options for the trailer. Okay. So, this is a good run through on all the options that we have. There are certain questions that people have or very specific sort of customization requests that people have. Our configuration specialists are always on hand to help you as you decide or try and understand those better um, later on. Absolutely. Okay, good. So let's get going. Okay, base. So base is all about base level personalization and all of these options that are included in this section for base are included in the base price of the standard trailer. We have three choices when it comes to your interior wood color. Tell us a bit about them. Yeah, we have three choices. So we started our journey off with oak, then we went to maple, and finally now, most recently, we've released uh, this beautiful contemporary look. So I'll start with oak. The oak cabinetry or the oak um, interior, so the walls and all our trailers are made of the same product. They're made of a Maranti plywood board, and the face of it, or it's skinned, shall we say, with a, um, a photo laminate. On the oak, of course, it's an oak sort of photo laminate, and, and that obviously covers all the walls. And then the doors themselves are all solid oak. The doors on the bottom and the top in the oak trailers are solid, so completely solid doors. So, and this oak is a beautiful color. It's uh, sort of a, you can get a nice redness. Yeah, a nice warm sort of redness, warm, kind of like classic red, look. Yeah, classic. And we have a few trailers when, you know, I'm colorblind, but we have a few trailers where Oh, it, just, it just it just really pops. Yeah, right? it really has to be. We've got one in the showroom right now. And I think the combination of it really brings out the redness in it. It makes it a beautiful, uh, beautifully rich color. But it's your choice. Maple. Maple is a second choice we came out with. It's a lighter color, sort of a little bit more contemporary in its own in its own way for the time when it came out. Um, again, the walls are Maranti plywood with a photo finish laminate on it. And then the doors are solid maple. The doors on the bottom are completely solid, so solid infill, and the doors on the top have a, a perspex, like a plastic inlay in them, and it just kind of gives a bit more of a smoky, sort of transparent look to them on the top, look. translucent yeah. sort of look to the top of them. You can't see what's inside the cabinet on them, but they kind of give that sort of, uh, just an extra tone. Extra tone, it's I think it's a, it makes it a bit more modern too, right? Yeah. It still has that classic warmth of the, of, you right. know, this wood. And we, and we have a lot of customers who themselves, we don't do this part, but a lot of customers who go and put LED lights into their cabinets yeah. and then it'll, it'll shine through the translucent um, yeah, you know, really sort nice. of inlay that we have in those, in those doors. Contemporary. Contemporary is the most recent look that we've brought out. And this really was um, a result of, you know, sort of requests from our customers over time to say, hey, can you get rid of some of the, the other looks that you have and bring out something a bit more European and maybe what they might consider a bit more modern. Um, so we reacted to that and now we have our contemporary look and our contemporary look is a much brighter, a whiter sort of look. Again, the walls are Maranti plywood and uh, photo finish laminate on top of that. It's a very durable sort of plastic, yeah. that, that, that laminate. And we've done a fair bit of testing on this ourselves just to, to make sure it'll withstand the grease the and the grime dirt and, and all that dirt stuff and, and it washes off beautifully. All this type of thing. Uh, so we've done all that and it washes off beautifully. So we're very happy with this particular product. And then the doors themselves, so the doors will be very similar to the maple in so much as the doors actually are maple and they're painted white. The doors on the bottom are solid infill. The doors on the top are again that Perspex uh, sort of translucent. Same as you see on the maple. Same as we have on the maple. Yeah, so you can do the same thing. You can put some lights in behind them and have it shine through to give you some different sort of ambiance inside your trailer. Yeah, the contemporary look is is just fantastic. I think it came out really, really beautiful. Yeah. And it really yeah. helps to open up the trailer and provide this kind of 
you know, I, I always say it's still warm, but it's not too sterile. When you have a white yes. interior, it kind of gets sterile. Yeah. But it's, it's still got this nice warmth to it. I think yeah, it's, it's, it's not. It's not like some of it's, it's not like some of the the trailers you see where where the entire when the interior is just like medical grade white. Yeah. <laughs> sort of on the interior, so it has a little bit more sort of feel and uh, and warmth to it. For your fabric for mica and flooring, you have seven different choices each. So you can imagine how many different combinations of those that you can get to really make your trailer your own. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, up until a couple of years ago, it was always customization that we had one choice of fabric flooring and formica pretty much, and or sorry, yeah, one choice of fabric and flooring. And uh, and you kind of went with that. And then last year or so, we brought out the seven different choices for you. So it's quite a large range oh, yeah. for people, which enables them to, um, to choose and build up their trailer within, and it's all within the base price of the trailer. Absolutely. Okay, for our trim, we have four different colors that you can choose. And the trim is what goes around your countertops or around your, your tabletop or around your additional counter extensions that you may put in. So we have four choices. You've got black, cream, dark brown, and white. So decals are decals on the side of the trailer and the exterior of the trailer. How many of those do we have, Harris? We have 17 different choices for different colors of decals. Custom personalization. Now, this is the area that Escape is known best for and it may be the reason why you chose escape in the in the first place custom personalization enables you to truly customize and personalize the trailer for yourself so for these options and all of the options that we're going to talk about hereafter they are an additional cost on top of the that's unit. right that's right everything from here on is entirely your choice so uh, it's your choice to pay for it or not full wrap on cushions standard in the trailer you have a you know, your cushion wrapped around the front with a vinyl backing, which is nice if you've got a, you know, dog or kids or clumsy people. Yeah, um, yeah. Or if you come in and you're wet or something yeah. and you're going to sit down. Just at the lake or out for a, a, after a hike or something. Yeah. Nice to flip it over and have that vinyl backing. Yeah. But the option is a full wrap on cushions. And this is with one of our standard fabrics. You can have it wrapped all the way around with your chosen fabric that's right so it's great if you want to you know continually flip the cushions to keep yep. them looking fresh yep. or if one side gets worn down you can always flip to the other that's right that's right plus additional fabric choice so this is a second fabric choice that you can have so basically you can say i want the the seat cushions to be uh, one choice maybe tenacity harvest and then let's go crazy completely crazy and say i want the back cushions and maybe the the valances to be chinchilla yes. I want that leatherette look so i want a real a real combination, but it's entirely up to you which you choose. So we have that option for a second fabric choice. And these are with your standard fabrics. So you can have with the two, standard fabrics. two of the standard fabrics inside the trailer. Yes. Custom fabric. So if one of our seven different choices for fabric isn't to your liking, mm -hmm. you can always send your own custom fabric to us and we'll put it on the trailer with that small... Uh, you know, customization, you know, yeah. handling charge. And you'll want to talk. So there is, yeah, there is a, there's obviously a handling charge for this and you're buying the fabric yourself, but you will need to talk to one of our configuration specialists if you take this route, just because there's, you know, there's a, there's a lot of complexity with custom fabric around, you know, the direction of how it runs. So there's sort of repeating patterns and different things in it. And that, that sort of features in to helping decide how much fabric you need to purchase. So, you know, the, the type of dinette that you have, the direction of the fabric, yeah, if you want yeah. full wrap or not, exactly. really affects how much fabric so you So I would need. say if you, if you know you want to do it, you select it here, we're always gonna contact you anyway and um, make sure we, we get the right amount of it here. Custom Formica. So you can also choose a different Formica from the seven options that we already have included as, as, the, as a free or within the standard base. So you can choose a, different from Mica that you'll be paying a little bit extra for. So the strategy here is you go to formica.com, you pick from the Formica, you pick a Formica from the range that we uh, that we specify and you send us the name, the number and a picture of it. Then we will coordinate the delivery of that Formica to escape. Absolutely. And then if this Formica, if it ends with anything other than dash 58, dash 58 is a finish mm -hmm. of Formica. If it's outside that range, there's that additional cost on top of that. Yeah. Custom flooring. So you get to also choose a different type of flooring for yourself. So the way this works is you go to Mannington.com. You choose from a luxury vinyl sheet flooring, either silver or gold. You can choose whichever one you want. At that point, um, you will purchase it through our vendor, which is Olson Floors. 
and then they will arrange to send it to us and we'll install it for you. Again, this is another area where you'll definitely be involved probably with our, well, definitely probably, probably be involved with our custom, our um, configuration expert. <laughs> gosh, our configuration experts. And, and they'll help you through this part. Definitely. Off-grid power. These options are specifically related to creating power yourself and be able to distribute that power inside your trailer. So these are specifically useful for a person if they're boondocking or if they're at campsites where they don't have power supply. Yeah, definitely. So there are three sort of levels of battery to think about. If you're considering that you're just gonna take solar, then we can forget about one of them and move to the other two. But we'll start off. So there's three levels of batteries for us to talk about. What's the first one? So standard is your single 12 volt lead acid battery. And this offers about 90, 95 amp hours. And a pristine lead acid battery will, will go to about 50% of its available capacity. So you get about you know 45 usable amp hours. Yeah. So I think for a person, if you're planning to mostly be at campsites, especially campsites with power, then your uh, your single 12 volt lead acid battery will do just fine. And even if you're going off off grid just a little bit, you know, for a day here and there, and you're not power hungry, um, so you're mostly, you know, just using your LED lights mm -hmm. and you may be using your furnace, right? That's gonna draw as well. Those are probably the two biggest, uh, the biggest draws you would, you would have, and you would certainly wouldn't be using anything else in your trailer at that point then it's um, it's also quite functional but if you want to do a little bit more and you want to be safe and ensure you have some more power then um, certainly we're going to be looking at the next option what's the next option up from that so your first option when it comes to your batteries are your uh, dual six volt lead acid batteries so these are wired in series so they function as as a 12 volt battery and these offer about 223 amp hours between the two of them so 50% capacity goes to about 112 usable. So you increase your capacity from the standard 12 volt about two and a half times. So this is great for, especially if you've got some solar, this will really add some storage, you know, power storage to your trailer so that you can go boondocking for longer periods of time. Yeah, and these numbers are based on a, on a pristine sort yes. of lead acid battery. They do degrade a little bit over time and they do have maintenance requirements. So you need to fill them with distilled water and that sort of stuff. But that really then brings us to the next option. And this is the most modern option that people have, and we'll all know it from electric cars and golf carts and different things, which is the lithium battery option. Um, lithium batteries are a great choice. They, you know, they have a, a much higher cycling capacity. You can drain them down an awful lot more than you can with your yeah, lead acid they, batteries. Yeah, lead or lithium batteries have a few benefits. They last three to five times longer, so they can cycle many more times than mm. a lead acid battery can. Um, as we've kind of mentioned, a lead acid battery is what's called a wet cell mm -hmm. battery, whereas lithium batteries are dry cells, so they don't have to be topped off with water. They charge faster than lead acid batteries do. Fourth, the power density is better, so they're lighter for the amount of power that they store. And fifth, and most importantly, is that they have a much lower relative discharge. So they can go theoretically down to 0%, although we recommend that you stay somewhere around 30% of the available capacity to ensure the length of life of the battery. Yeah. So uh, you can get up to two lithium batteries. They are both 100 amp hours, so you get, you know, at that 30%, 70 amp hours usable. And the main benefit is that they last for so much longer than a lead acid battery will. Yeah, so more power, less maintenance, and better life on, on the lithium batteries. Definitely. Okay, the inverter, a 1500 watt inverter, which includes uh, the transfer switch and power to all the outlets in your trailer. So what an inverter does is, and this is purely for, you know, when you're boondocking, when you're not hooked up at a campsite, is that you'll be running off your batteries and your batteries run off what's called DC power, 12 volt power. Now, most household appliances like a microwave or a blender or charging a laptop take AC power or 120 volt power. Mm -hmm. So what an inverter does, is it converts DC power in your batteries to AC power in your outlets. So yeah, this is a really nice option to you know increase your off-grid capability or you know to enhance the enhance what you can do mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. the trailer. And the reason a person needs an inverter, something we didn't touch on earlier, is the fact that your solar panels only charge your batteries, and your batteries then provide power. Sorry, the inverter will pull power from the batteries at 12 volt DC, 
and then convert it to 120 volts AC and deliver that into your trailer. So if you're boondocking and you do not have an inverter, you will not have 120 volt AC. Absolutely. And you will have power through your 12 volt outlets, which we'll cover later on in the video, but you won't have power through your 120 volt outlets. Yeah. Now, the important thing with this, like you said, you know, your solar is always charging the batteries, but uh, this, the inverter will not run the air conditioner. A lot of people ask if it will run, yeah. it will not run the air conditioner. It's just not big enough. Yeah. And a, a very helpful rule of thumb when it comes to running things is that if you're heating something up or cooling it down, very typically it's going to run down those batteries. It's going to take a lot a of energy, a lot of energy. And what the transfer switch is, essentially it's a, you know, it's a switch located underneath the bench of the trailer. And uh, it just essentially just tells the outlets to either pull from shore power or pull from the inverter. Solar port wired to the charge controller. Now you can only have this if you already have solar panels installed, but what this does for you is it provides you with a, a port. And this port is, is on the sort of the bottom side or the lower side of your trailer, enables you to plug in a solar suitcase, which is really basically a, a portable solar panel. And the nice part of that is when you have these portable solar panels, you can take the panel on the wire and put it out in the sun somewhere and sort of direct it towards the sun so you get the maximum benefit from the sun it's also useful because sometimes people are you know you're camped up in a, in a wooded area you're maybe under some trees and um and you're not going to get so much sunlight to, to charge a trailer so having a solar suitcase is quite handy absolutely and it's a great way to augment your solar so let's say you're you know you're configuring your trailer and you say hey you know what i'm gonna get one panel but i don't know if i need a mm. second one later on down the road you can always put the solar port in and then all you have to do is buy the panel yeah. and you plug it in and with this with your portable solar panel that you would buy you need to make sure that you can remove the charge controller on it because this the solar yeah. port is already wired through our charge controller so if you have two they just it just won't work yeah, yeah. and there's all sorts of there's all sorts of technical tricks people come up with themselves after market but this is what we do here Pre-wire for solar with roof mount MC4 connector. So essentially what this does is, let's say if you're not sure if you want solar right now or you just want to improve the resale value of your trailer, essentially this puts all the pre-wiring in and it puts that MC4 connector at the top of the trailer so that you can get solar or easily add solar down the road. It's a lot easier for us to do this during production than it is aftermarket. Exactly. I mean, if you did this sort of thing aftermarket, you have wires running uh, you know, on, on top of all your headliner and, and different things, it'd be quite unsightly. So probably a lot more cost effective for us to put it in for you. And then, you know, whatever solar panel you want to put on the roof afterwards, you have the connection entirely up to you. Okay. Comfort is next. So let's look at the list of options that kind of make your experience just a little bit more comfortable. Removable power cord. This is one of my absolute favorite options. Standard in the trailer, you have a fixed power cord. So essentially it's fixed into the trailer and then you have a port on the side which you push your cord into or pull it out of. The option is the removable power cord. So this has a sealed port on the side of the trailer which you plug the cord in and, and out of. So this is nice, it's a nice sealed hole so there's nothing getting inside there. And what I really like about this option is that you can take this cord and put it wherever you want. So especially if you're a boondocker, you know, you're not using your power cord all the time and if you're pushing that fixed one in, it's gonna take up some storage space. So with the removable cord, you can put it wherever you like. With the fixed cord, it's a 20 foot 30 amp cord. With the removable cord, it's a 25 foot 30 amp cord. Yeah. Okay, electrical management system with surge protector. So what this does essentially, I kind of compare it to, you know, having a helmet when you're riding a bike. Because people ask me, do I need this option? Mm. I say, you don't need it. But when you, when you need it, you'll really wish that you had it. Mm -hmm. And essentially what it does is, let's say if you're at a campsite and they're running off of a generator or something and it's throwing off dirty power. So let's say it's, you know, it's not grounded or there's reverse polarity or something like that. The electrical management system will diagnose yeah. the power coming in and, let, and it'll pop up an error code if there is a problem so that you know, you know, you don't want to damage your trailer, right? So this will protect your trailer. That's right. That's and right. then the surge protector side of things exactly what it sounds like let's say there's you know some surge of power or there's something like that yeah it often comes from generate like yeah. you know, sometimes um campsites with generators you'll have some power surges coming in so you want to protect your equipment again so um, this is a nice this is a nice um this is a nice option just to protect the electrical equipment inside your trailer absolutely so if you're you know going to full service campsites a lot this would be a great option for you yeah 
Let's talk about air conditioning and cooling and, and air, really, inside the trailer. Standard, you have one of what's called a max fan. So this is great, it's 12 volt bi-directional fan, so we can push or pull air in and out of the trailer. I am consistently amazed with the results of the max fan. I think it's really fantastic for kind of more moderate climates. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great for getting that sort of ambient air through the trailer, Absolutely. so creating some sort of cooling effect with just yeah. the air movements. You know, open up your windows, have your max fan pulling air out, and you'll get some fresh air inside in, in no time. Yeah. And then in the second kind of hole at the top of the trailer, you have a vent, a static vent. And this has a bug screen and a cover. For all mm -hmm. intents and purposes, it's just a static vent. Yeah. So now what you can put into this vent is an air conditioner, and we're going to talk about those. In the trailer, you have the option for first an 11,000 BTU air conditioner. This is the Dometic low profile air conditioner. Does a great job, albeit perhaps a bit loudly. Some people say, I myself like you know, having a fan running at night, so yeah. it doesn't bother me. Yeah. Um, when it comes to running this air conditioner, you need either shore power or a minimum of a 2200 watt generator to run the air conditioner. It will never run off of you know, your batteries or, or your inverter. And we have a video here that, that shows the differences between the two. Yes. The second option is the Coleman Mach 10 NDQ air conditioner. So this is obviously a little bit bigger. So if you're in a really hot climate in Texas or Arizona or something like that, this will this will be helpful. The main benefit is the noise. It's mm. a bigger unit, so it doesn't have to work as hard to cool the same space. So if you want something a little bit quieter, this is a great option. And it also has Bluetooth functionality. That's right. Which is nice. Yeah, which is nice. So this is this is a this is a brand new unit that's just come out recently, the thirteen and a half thousand BTU unit in twenty twenty one. Um it's a bigger unit. I think it just pushes the air at lower velocity, so you have a little bit less noise in it. But again, we have a video here that sort of compares the two units to each other. Absolutely. And uh, one important note here when it comes to the to running the Coleman, uh, you can run it off of shore power, and then you can also run it off of a 2200 watt generator, just like the Dometic. But if you want to run it off of a 2200 watt generator, you would need to order it with the soft start. It needs to, have, it needs to come with the soft start. So when you're talking with your configuration expert, make sure to make sure yeah, to say that yeah. to them. Yeah, exactly. Heat strip for air conditioner. So on top of your air conditioner option, you can add a heat strip. So tell us a bit about what that yeah, is. Yeah, but heat strip is basically just a, a nichrome wire that sits inside the that sits inside the air conditioner. So you put electricity to it, and it'll it'll give you a nice little bit of warmth from it. It's not going to it's not going to heat your trailer in the, in cold conditions, but certainly yeah. it takes a bit of a chill off the air in the morning. And it's also a nice addition to get some dry heat into that trailer. So if you are sort of in more winterish conditions, it's not going to heat your trailer, but it will help add heat into the trailer in dry form. So you're not getting that wet heat in that just uh, condenses on your windows or on the cold surfaces inside your trailer. Absolutely. So a nice way to get some heat inside the trailer when you're running from shore power, having that dry heat. Yes. Because we're not covering the propane furnace in this video, but it comes standard, but propane is a wet heat. Yes. So it'll keep it nice and dry inside the trailer with that, with that heat. Strip. Yeah, well, it'll keep it drier. <laughs> drier, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Two-way hot water tank. Standard in the trailer, you have a one-way hot water tank, which is fueled by propane, fired by propane. And you have the option to upgrade to a two-way hot water tank, which will be powered by either propane or shore power. So it's a great way, especially if you're all, you know, going to campsites quite often, mm -hmm. you can use that instead of using up all your propane. Yeah. Let's talk about table mounting systems in your trailer. So standard, you have what I would call a two pole system. So you got two fixed poles mm -hmm. and th those, you have a slider on that table. So it slides slide to side in the trailer, not front to back, but side to side. And the way that you turn this into a bed is, is that you pop the tabletop off, the two legs come out, and then the tabletop sits on the runners on either side. So nice, you know, good way to make it into a bed is nice, you know, yeah. sturdy table. Yeah, and, um, all our, and all our tabletops enable you the same feature, right? Where you yeah. can turn them into a bed, Absolutely. turn that dinette into a bed area. Absolutely, and with that slider that I mentioned, that does have a set screw so that you can lock it yeah. into place. Yeah. So your first option thereafter is what's called the Springfield pedestal. So this is a pneumatic powered piston. So the way I would turn it into a bed is that I pop the two black locks off and then I press down onto the table and lock them back up at the bottom. So really nice and easy to make into a bed. So if you are, you know, mm -hmm. turning into a bed and then a dinette and vice versa every morning and night, it is a really nice option to just make it nice and easy. And especially if you don't have that mobility to lift up 
the the tabletop it's a it's a fantastic option and this does have a standard slider as well okay wireless backup camera with the display monitor that's wired to a 12 volt plug which sits inside your vehicle so the wireless backup camera itself sits inside the sits on the back of the trailer it's a very handy tool for reversing into your spots but it's also a very handy tool because it gives you mirror function mirror capability which means if you're driving down the highway you can uh, you can flip into mirror mode and see what's behind you now so yeah a nice safety option and you know really really fantastic yeah and of course like you said the display to actually look at sits inside your vehicle and plugs into the um, it's the cigarette lighter 12 volt outlet that you have. Yeah, it'll just sit up on the dash. Yeah. LED captain's reading lights. It's best to show you what it looks like. Okay, kitchen. Let's talk about all the items that are inside your kitchen or related to your sort of kitchen area. Yeah, cooking and cold food storage and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, cooking and cold food storage principally, yeah. Stainless steel backsplash in kitchen. This is kind of speaks for itself when you see it. It's a really sharp stainless steel backsplash. Just goes on the back of the kitchen face and it's really sharp looking. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about microwaves inside the trailer. Standard in the trailer, there is one pre-wired cabinet and the location of this varies from trailer to trailer. But essentially this cabinet has a cabinet door and then it's pre-wired for a microwave on the inside. So it's got a 120 volt outlet. So you can put your microwave into that cabinet or if you have the two burner cooktop, you can have your microwave installed under the stove. Okay, convection microwave oven. So a nice sort of alternative to um, having an oven and a microwave is to have one that combines both. So we have a, an RV specific convection microwave oven and this microwave oven fits in only one location and it fits underneath the two burner stoves. You cannot take an oven and a convection microwave oven at the same time. So yeah, this, with this convection microwave oven, it's kind of the best of, of both worlds really. So you can cook a pizza or you can heat up your, your pasta. And one important thing to note with this is that you'd obviously, just like with the normal microwave, you need an inverter to run it. And when it comes to the convection microwave oven, you would need a minimum of two lithium batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, the startup current is just a lot to get it running. So you need two lithium batteries to get it running when you're boondocking. Okay, the lavatory or your wet bath area. The option is a foot flush toilet. So it's a lever located on the front of the toilet, which you push down with your foot to flush yeah. the toilet. So this is a nice option if you have a hard time bending over That's right. or something like that, or you don't want to bend over where you've just been. Yeah. It's a nice just to push down with your foot. Composting toilet. So you have the option for a composting toilet. So these are very different from the standard toilet and that they don't use any water. So right. we'll talk about this a bit later on, but when you get the composting toilet, it doesn't have any water, so you don't have a black tank. That's right. And instead what it does is essentially, you've got two receptacles. One for liquid waste, one for solid waste. So for liquid waste, you'll kind of empty that and dump it wherever you can. And for solid waste, that'll have some sort of medium on the inside, like mm -hmm. a coconut husk or something like that. And then you'll turn this you know, lever or kind of mm -hmm. spindle on the side so to stir turn, things. Yeah. to stir it all up. And this is all vented out to the outside of the trailer, so it won't smell on That's the inside. Right. It's virtually smell free. So really nice, especially if you don't like, you know, emptying a black tank or yeah. like a lot of people do. Or if you, you know, if you're out boondocking, kind of like we've said, your water can be your big bottleneck. So if you don't, you know, the yeah. composting toilet doesn't use any water, uh, definitely kind of, you know, look into these a bit further. Fantastic option. Definitely not for everyone. Um, yeah. Yeah. Not for everyone. I mean, they're a bit higher. Right, obviously, because they have all these extra sort of components inside them, sort of located more at the bottom of the of the toilet itself, so a little bit higher to sit on. Anybody who's a, a boater or a marine a person will be used to probably to a composting toilet. Um, so they're a nice, they're a nice additional feature for people to have, as you say, stops you having to empty your black tank. Absolutely, and yeah. like we said, they're not for everybody, and this kind of factors into the next part, which is whether to include or exclude the black tank, mm. the vent pipe, and the black tank vent stack. So if you don't get these, you won't be able to add a standard, you know, water fridge or water toilet. toilet later on down the road. If you do, you'll be able to add these. So really, if you know, I'm going to own this trailer forever. I only want composting toilet. You may not need to bother, but if you want to improve the resale value or you want to add a standard toilet later on down the road, yeah, you would get the black tank. And this all, and this all sort of factors into the, to the fact that escapes sell for such a great resale value. 
and people will often buy an escape, use it for a couple of years, determine if this lifestyle is for them, and if it isn't, they'll, they'll sell it. So if that's you, then probably best to protect for the ability to be able, for someone to be able to add a water toilet in there afterwards. So as Harrison said, the standard excludes the black tank piping and the black tank vent stack. So ask us if you want them. Yeah, you need to select it. Toilet shut off valve. So essentially what this does is it's a little valve that you can turn and it will shut off the flow of water to the toilet. So this is great when you're doing maintenance so that you don't get wet. Yes. Okay, let's move on to exterior customization. So these are all the items on the exterior of your trailer that you can customize to make it so a little bit more personal or functional for you. Body lift kit. So essentially what this is, is it's a spacer set placed on top of the axle and it lifts the body of the trailer up by mm -hmm. about two and five eighths inches. So this is nice to get some additional ground clearance from, from the ground obviously. Yeah, for your so. tanks and, and different things that are on the knee. So it is what it says, it lifts the body. It's a body lift kit. Yeah, so your lowest point is about, you know, eight or nine inches off the ground. So this will give you that increased ground clearance for, you know, logging roads, provincial parks, all those kinds of yeah, things. Yeah, getting in and out of your driveway, whatever it might be. For the Escape 5.0 TA, if your sidewalls exceed 56 inches, you would need the high lift kit to just lift that body up by that little bit to, to get over those sidewalls. That's right. Exterior shower for the driver's side. This is one of my favorite options. It allows you to, you know, it's a quick change water outlet on the side of the trailer. It comes with a hose, but with this quick connect water connection, you, I've seen people have done faucets, shower heads, all mm. sorts off this platform. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to access hot and cold water from outside the trailer. So on the driver's side, I really imagine the use for it for, you know, washing the dog off after the lake or washing your boots off after a hike. So it's really nice to not have to bring all that stuff inside. Exterior shower on the passenger side of the trailer. This is one of my favorite options, uh, as I mentioned. So you can get this on the driver's side and or the passenger side of the trailer. It's quick connect water connection, allows you to access hot and cold water from outside the trailer. And on the passenger side, I really imagine this for, you know, you could set up a little tote, you could set up a little dishwashing station or a fish cutting station. Yep. So you're not bringing all that stuff inside and you're also not filling up your gray tank. So especially if you're boondocking or you just don't really like, you know, emptying the gray tank. This is a really nice option. Yeah. Aluminum rim package, why not add a little bit of bling to your trailer? The standard, of course, is a white steel, a white painted steel wheel. And the option here is to move up to an aluminum wheel. So yeah, you have your aluminum, aluminum rims, and for either the painted white steel rims or the aluminum rims, you always have a full size spare standard on the back and the rim for that one will match whatever rim package you went yeah, with. So exactly. painted white steel, or aluminum. For sure. Okay, exterior propane quick connect. So this is a very nice feature. It sits uh, to the right of the door on your trailer and provides you the capability to have propane right at that location, which is a great tool, I think, for a little fire bowl, you know, a little fire pit or a, um, or a barbecue. Yeah, any propane appliance that has a removable regulator. This is nice because then rather sure. than having to, you know, bring another propane tank or anything with you, you can always just hook it directly up to your, your trailer system. So yeah, this is a fantastic option. Yeah, but the most important part here is you need to be able to remove the regulator from whatever device you're plugging in because, of course, the propane is already regulated when it comes off your tanks on your trailer. Power awning. So standard on the trailer is a manual awning. Manual awning is quite easy to deploy, not an issue if you're short or if you're tall it, mostly it's just an issue if you have limited mobility in your shoulders and and that and that sort of thing or in your hands uh, but otherwise quite easy to deploy and a big benefit of this is that you can lower one side you've got these two arms that come That's out right. and you can lower one side relative to the other so principally your awning is a sunshade but let's say if you have it out in the rain you know kind of in the northwest here yeah you know the pacific yeah. northwest we get a lot of rain um, so it's nice to have your awning out and kind of lower one side relative to the other and have the rain run off the side as That's opposed right. to collecting. And I, I mean, I've, I've used the awning, the manual awning extensively in the rain, right? Because I like to sit outside even though, it's, even though it's raining. But of course it is fabric, so it does get wet and will need to be dried afterwards. Right? So that's uh, one feature or one, one thing to note. Of course, the option then is to go to a power awning. And I love the power awning. I think it's a beautiful, it's a, it's a beautiful looking awning it's clean it deploys, easy to use press one really button. nice it has that wind sensor on it so if the wind gets up it'll pull itself 
back in. Um, you know, if you're looking for shade and ease of use, then the power awning is a beautiful feature to add to your trailer. Definitely. So with this, it's self-supporting, so it doesn't have those arms coming down, which mm. is nice, obviously, yeah. but you can't lower one side relative to the other. Yeah, others. so water will pool in the middle of this one if it rains, uh, if it rains heavy. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. LED awning light strip. So you can add this to the power awning or the manual awning, and it's just a nice light strip located underneath the awning. It's dimmable, so you can make it lower or higher in terms of its strength. Yeah, it's nice to get some nice kind of indirect glow underneath your awning. Yeah. Okay, spray foam insulation for under the trailer without heat pads. So one nice addition to your trailer to add to the insulation is to add the addition of spray foam underneath. We use a polyurethane spray foam. It is very rigid. It is very hard and um, does a couple of things. One, it adds a little bit more protection on the underneath, but principally it provides you with more insulation. Absolutely. So this, you know, um, it'll be sprayed everywhere except for, you know, your dump valves and everything that yeah. you need. So those are still yeah. accessible. The maintenance points are all still available. Yeah, absolutely. And with this, I always say that the, the spray foam insulation, when it comes to, you know, the winter season capability of your trailer, it will not make it a four season trailer. So no. we're a three season trailer. So this will kind of make it more of three and a half. Yeah, it gives a shoulder season. Shoulder season the yeah, capability. It. And it's really more of a holding measure. So it's not gonna, if it's really, you know, really, really cold outside and you know, below freezing, the cold's still gonna creep in there eventually. Well, eventually, well, it will, but uh, you know, we have customers at, um, at zero degrees Fahrenheit camping in the trailers and they have the spray foam insulation underneath and the, and the propane furnace that we have is more than capable to keep them comfortable. Um, the challenge is, of course, that the water pipes, your dump pipes, yeah. those areas would freeze up. So if you are going to go camping at zero Fahrenheit, then um, you, um, you can certainly take your water with you inside the trailer. You can yeah. still use the trailer quite handily, but you wouldn't live in the trailer. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, you can camp inside the trailer, no problem. You've got some good insulation on the inside, it's just you won't have running water. Now, when it comes to kind of improving that shoulder season capability, you can get the 12 volt heat pads. Mm. So the 12 volt heat pads go on the fresh and gray tanks, which live underneath the body right. of the trailer, place on the tanks to just help to keep them warm. So it improves that shoulder season capability. Now these are 12 volt heat pads. So you could run them off the batteries, but they pull 10 amps each when yeah. they're actively running. Yeah. So they're, they're pretty power hungry. So really I would only run these you know, off of short power. That's right. That's right. Additional exterior LED light, the standard and optional locations are on the floor plan document, which is in the description down below. Um, yeah, these are nice, you know, exterior LED lights just help you see, you know, at night or for whatever you need. Yeah. Exterior 12 volt slash USB outlet. So this has, you know, one 12 volt outlet, which is your circular, kind of like your cigarette lighter in your car mm -hmm. outlet. And then it'll have two USB-A outlets to charge a phone or a speaker or something like that. And these will, this will be powered from the batteries. Exterior access hatch. So we'll show you what this looks like, but essentially what these are, these are lockable hatches on the outside of the trailer, which allow you to access your storage. So these do not increase the storage of your escape. It just allows you to access them in a different way. And these are on the layout diagram that we have. Yes, the standard and optional locations are on the floor plan document. Interior customization. So let's look at the inside of the trailer and customize it just to your liking. Additional 12 volt slash USB interior outlet. So the standard and optional locations for this are on the floor plan document. Standard, you always have one 12 mm -hmm. volt slash USB outlet and you have the option to add more. So essentially what this is, is it has one 12 volt outlet, which is kind of like your cigarette lighter in your, in your car. And then it'll have two USB-A outlets. So if you want to charge your phone or laptop or something like that, you, this is what you'll have. And these will always be powered by the battery. Counter extensions. So a counter extension is a very nice way to add more horizontal space in your trailer. We have many locations where you can put the counter extensions. So have a look at the layout diagram. Retractable wall hooks. So these can be placed in a few different locations, which are on the floor plan document. And these are nice to just add some, you know, hook space yeah. inside the trailer. Yeah, you always need to hang things up, right? For towels or yeah, jackets and towels, coats. Coats, jackets, keys, whatever it might be. So internal walls change to solid walls. So the majority of the walls in the trailer are a lightweight construction, sort of framed up and then with our uh, laminated sort of Maranti board wall that sits on the, sits on the outside of it. If you want to mount things on these walls, you either have to find the stud locations or the best option is to change it to a solid wall. So when we implement a solid wall in your trailer, we put a piece of three quarter 
plywood in place. And this option used to be called a reinforced walls. Yeah, yeah, we used to call it a reinforced So if you're speaking to an ambassador, they might refer to it as a reinforced wall, but in reality, we change it to a solid wall. Convert the bench seat to a U-shaped dinette. Um, obviously, bench seats are the full length of the dinette, and you can convert this into a U-shape, and the U-shape gives you a little bit more accessible storage area. Um, also gives you a shorter table. So yeah, the bench seat is best for, I would say, kind of like, you know, four adults sitting around the table. And yeah. that's principally because of your, you know, your leg room down below. And I say that the U-shape is best for two people and then a dog or, you know, someone stretching their feet across the back. Yeah. So, yeah. Full height cabinet located right of the entry door. Best to show you what this one looks like. You can add shelves in this cabinet, and these are in place in so much as once you get them, you can't move them, but you can tell us where you want them to a certain degree, in so much as that you, you have to have a minimum of 10 inches in between each shelf, just so that we can get our tools in there to put them in there. Yeah, we can go equispaced, or, or we really need 10 inches so we can get our power tools in to, to fix these in place. Additional shelves and wardrobe closets. Standard in the fifth wheel, you have a shelf at the top with a hanging rod down below. You have the option to add shelves down below instead of the hanging rod to make yeah. it into more kind of like a folded clothes type space. Okay, audio and TV for your viewing pleasure. Stereo with four speakers. This stereo does Bluetooth, FM, AM, CDs, DVDs, USB aux. It also has the, the left and right channels for your TV. So this is a really nice option to get some, you know, you know, sound throughout your trailer. Mm. So, you know, listening to music, movies, TV shows, podcasts, can do it all. Okay, TV cable ready with a 120 volt outlet. This does not include the actual television itself. That's something you would provide. So a lot of campsites have cable TV um, and you can screw that cable TV into the outside of your trailer and we wire it through to the inside of your trailer to a specific location. And then you can install a TV and have cable TV. Yeah, absolutely. And this also has the 120 volt outlet so you can power the TV itself. And talking about TVs and everything like that, um, we, 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 you can buy a TV arm from us. Yeah. Uh, like you said, we do not supply the TV. And in terms of sizing of the TV, we say that 22 inches is the absolute maximum of what you can put inside. Really, we would recommend a 20 inch TV so that it fits nicely into the cabinet space. TV antenna, which includes the TV ready with 120 volts. Uh, obviously, it does not include the TV. So a TV antenna is a directional antenna that we mount on the top of the trailer. Um, so you can have you know, terrestrial TV signals. Absolutely. And for everything other than the fifth wheel, if you get this option, you cannot get a second solar panel. Right. Windows, quite often one of the more important, certainly aesthetic features that people want to add into a trailer. So let's talk about windows. Frameless windows. So standard in the trailer, you have a framed window and That's you right. have the option for frameless. Now, whether you get framed or frameless, you're always getting dual pane insulated windows with bug screens. Yes. So there's no difference there. Um, so frame windows are on a slider. So they slide horizontally. So all, all our framed windows are on sliders. On sliders. Right. And these are nice, you know, because they allow a lot of airflow and can kind of get like a nice cross breeze going between the big yeah. openings. Now, when it comes to the rear window, that's where framed and frameless differ the most. Mm -hmm. And that's because with a framed window setup, the rear window is fixed. Yes. So it will not open. Now the option are frame less windows. These are top hinged awning style opening windows. So these, you know, these are great for the rain, right? Because you open them up and the rain can, can be coming in you know, diagonally as, as it does here. And it'll wash down the window as opposed to getting inside. So you don't provide as much of that kind of natural airflow. But what I always say is that you can have your frameless windows open and then you can have your max fan, which comes standard, right. pulling air out of the trailer to get fresh air inside. And like I said, uh, the rear is where framed and frameless differ the most. And that's because of the frameless window setup. The rear window is a split opening rear window. So you can open either side of the window independently of the other. Yeah. So now with that being said, you can mix and match just that rear window. Right. So if you want to have framed all the way around and a single frameless on the back, 
you can do that. And it's the only place we do it. The no only place we do side it. Windows. So the rear window is the only way, place we will switch it out and you can have a frameless only window on the rear. Yeah. Now, now, one point to note about, about this. So on the front of the trailers, well, this is uh, an option obviously on the 21 Classic, but it's standard on the rest of the trailers. There is a single glazed rock guard window. And that window on the front is, although it's single glazed, there is a rock guard cover on the front, so it principally protects your window when you're driving down the road. Okay, rock flies up and, and smashes it. But by virtue of the fact of having the rock guard cover on there, it does create a certain amount of insulation and gives you, you know, something similar to what a double pane window would get you. Yeah, it forms an air pocket and that serves as your insulation. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks very much for sitting with us for through this uh, entire video or the educational portion of this video. I really hope it helps you to um, educate better on what we offer and what these different options are helps you make your choice of course don't forget the escape configuration specialists are always there for you and they will help you to make further decisions or answer more questions that you may have anything else harrison we also have videos up on our youtube channel you know talking more specifically yeah. about options so be sure to check there for all the videos that we've released in the past and we're releasing more videos every single week so be sure to check there intermittently and you know subscribe and follow us and you know learn more that's it. Fantastic. Okay. Good luck, everybody. Looking forward to building your trailer. We are Escape Trailer, and we're built, built for, for you. you.